Welcome back to Fox 5's On the Hill Live this Sunday morning. You know, it's been nearly two weeks now since the midterm elections with the House gaining the majority for the Republicans. The Senate, though, remains firmly in Democratic hands. Will anything get done with a split on the Hill? We want to welcome back in Maryland Senator, Democratic Senator Chris Van Hollen to Fox 5's On the Hill. Senator, uh, good to see you this Sunday morning. You know, a lot of people have been wondering how this is going to work. Republicans are going to have the House. You Democrats are, are going to have the Senate. What do you see as, as the Senate's role in this? And are you the gas pedal or the brake here up on the Hill? Well, Tom, it's great to be with you. And I do want to thank uh, the people of Maryland uh, for their vote of confidence for another term. It's an honor to represent them in the United States Senate. And I am pleased that the Democrats uh, continue to have a majority, a very slim one, 50-50, but with one race to still go in Georgia, my colleague, uh, Senator Raphael Warnock. The House, as you said, um, is now slimly in, in Republican hands. The first thing is the business we got to do in this, in the, what we call the lame duck session, right? Mm -hmm. We have an active uh, agenda. We want to pass the defense authorization bill. Uh, the Electoral Count Act, uh, which is a limited reform, but an important one to prevent um, anybody from trying to overturn an election um, when the electoral votes get to the, the Congress. Um, and third, we got to keep the government up and, and running. Uh, the current continuing resolution expires in mid-December, and we got to avoid another senseless and shameful government shutdown. So we have a packed agenda just for the lame duck. Next year, um, look, I think the main thing is, one, to avoid really bad things, um, avoid future government shutdowns, mm -hmm. make sure we pay our debts on time, because Kevin McCarthy, the incoming speaker wannabe, uh, is already threatening to, to use that as a cudgel to try to uh, cut programs, um, including it would be, you know, Medicare and Social Security. So. Right. The bottom line, Tom, is I always look for opportunities to get things done across the aisle uh, with our colleagues. But at a very minimum, uh, we need to prevent um, some of these bad things from happening that could have a negative impact on the economy. You know, I know in this lame duck session, you've got a lot of things you want to get to. One of them, I don't think this gets a lot of attention, is, is the Chesapeake Bay. You've been working on some legislation to protect it. And it's, you know, it's not only a, a nice thing that people like care about the Bay, it's also vital to the economy in Maryland. What is the status of that legislation right now? And what are its prospects for getting signed into law? Well, Tom, thanks for raising that. And there are two issues with the Bay. In the immediate term during this lame duck, uh, we need to make sure that we continue to boost funding for the Chesapeake Bay cleanup uh, program. Uh, that's primarily through EPA, but also programs through the Fish and Wildlife Service. And I do think we're going to be able to get continued strong federal support for, for that, um, something I've worked on uh, very hard along with uh, my colleagues. Then uh, Congressman John Sarbanes and I have a longer term project, uh, which is to put the Chesapeake Bay under the umbrella of the National Park Service. It's called the Chesapeake National Recreation Area. It would bring more federal resources to this incredible natural and national treasure. Uh, it would tell the story of the Chesapeake Bay to the American people. And as you just indicated, importantly, it would bring more resources, more tourists to the Bay Area so that those who make their livelihood off the bay mm -hmm. uh, will have even more opportunities because the bay a healthy bay is a very important economic engine that's why right. we need but to keep will, it healthy will the, will the states and, go uh, along with that forward. though will the states that are in the watershed right now go along with that i think they will I, we had both governor hogan as well as the uh, the virginia governor governor northrum who was the governor when we first proposed this both be supportive. We think both of the current uh, governors will be supportive. I'm confident that the Wes Moore, the governor elect in Maryland, will be supportive. So uh, I, I want to make it clear what we've done. Uh, we've we've introduced a, a proposal for comment yeah. uh, on exactly how this would work, outlining that the areas within the Bay that would be designated as key landmarks under this national park uh, umbrella. Uh, and then we would actually introduce the bill 
early next year. So when you right. ask me what hey, I Senator, hope we can we, get we got done a, a short next amount year, of time here. So I, I, I want to get to a couple other things. And before we leave you, I want to ask you about the tone in politics right now. It's gotten nasty. It continues to get nasty. Uh, we look at Pennsylvania with what went on in the Senate race up there before Mehmet Oz and John Fetterman. Fetterman won, but there was some, you know, coverage of what John Fetterman went through in a health situation because he had suffered a stroke at one point that a lot of people saw was over the top. You dealt with a stroke situation yourself and emerged, you know, in very good health right now. From your perspective, when you watched that, what did you make out of that? And what are people entitled to as far as knowledge of their public official's health status? Well, Tom, you're right. Unfortunately, we're in a sort of very poisonous and polarized political environment. I think everybody needs to work harder uh, to overcome uh, those differences. But as you say, we saw really terrible attacks uh, on John Fetterman as he worked to recover uh, from a stroke. Uh, and, you know, these come in all shapes and sizes. I was lucky. Uh, John Fetterman is clearly on the mend. He's clearly getting better and better uh, by the day. Uh, he's going to be able to, I believe, perform his duties very well. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was really sad to see these attacks launched upon him, you know, because he needed, for example, closed captioning mm -hmm. um, as he recovered. I mean, we should make we should make allowances uh, for people uh, who are dealing with health challenges. Senator, and I think one of the reasons Senator, Fetterman won, we're people saw out, him as a fighter. Senator, we're flat out of time. I am so sorry. And that is the uh, right. concept of the uh, Zoom interview that we're always on. Fox 5's On The Hill continues right after this. Senator Chris Van Hollen.